Hi guys, good afternoon. Thank you once again for tuning into my channel. It took me a little while to prepare for this video and please kindly asking I encourage you to look at the links in the description below and to view some of the research videos I made to make this video because I think they're important too. Okay, so today's topic that I'll be discussing is the Tunguska event of 1908. There are probably different ways to pronounce that, but I'm going to say Tunguska. Several comments on my channel recently have suggested that I look into the Tunguska event. Uh, Logan, I think, is the name of one fellow who leaves a lot of nice comments on my channel and he, he told me I should go look at this and I agree. Okay, so first bear with me, I'm going to try and retell and re-explain the official story because I just assume that most people haven't heard of this so I'm going to have to explain it first before I can even comment on it. Okay, so what was the Tunguska event? What was the Tunguska event? It was an explosion. It destroyed 2,000 square kilometers of forest. The official cause has been attributed to a meteorite or meteoroid. To me, this is a problem and I will return to this later. Although a meteoroid from outer space is the official cause, no impact crater has been found at the Tunguska site. And yes, if you look at popular images of the Tunguska site, you will see a vast circular area, 2,000 square kilometers, 2,000 square kilometers, and you, you'll see that trees aren't growing there, and just grass is growing there, but there's no crater, there's no actual impression in the ground, which is strange. I, I can't say I understand it. Okay, there were no known human casualties, although that's a little bit debatable, but generally nobody got killed, <coughs> probably, probably because this is, even today, a very remote area of Russia. According to Michael Tauber of Stanford University at the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, the Tunguska event is the largest impact event on Earth in recorded history. Okay, so that was me trying to answer the question, what was the Tunguska event? It is a bit mysterious. Where did the Tunguska event happen? It happened near the stony Tunguska River in, in Yeniseysk Governorate, which is now Krasnoyarsk Krai in Russia. This is the remote eastern Siberian taiga. The taiga forest is mostly pine trees or coniferous trees, uh, pine trees, spruce, fir, right? It looks a lot like um, Alberta, lots of pine trees. The area I'm actually in, in southern Ontario, is not actually boreal or taiga. I live in the northernmost region of Carolinian forest, so actually this is a different uh, type of forest. Anyway, I'm getting way away from my topic. Okay, so um, when did the Tunguska event happen? Well, it happened on the morning of the 30th of June in 1908. The Soviet State Academy expedition, led by Leonid Kulik, did not happen until much later. He visited in 1921, but there were not official scientific state expeditions until 19. 27, and he actually made return trips to the area even later, I think 1930. It is important to note that, stu that scientific study happened 10 years after the official event, or even later. So the event happens in 1908, and only, you know, like 10 years later do we actually get expedition to the place. <clears throat> so what caused the Tunguska event? This is the hardest question 
to answer. I will rely on Mark Peplow's 2013 article on Tunguska rock samples. This article appeared in Nature magazine and he's actually relying on another quote and he says, I'll just read it, there's another <laughs> there's really not much out there and nothing that's definitively Tunguska says Phil Bland, a meteorite expert at Curtin University in Perth, Australia. The lack of rock samples has allowed wild speculation about the cause of the event, with some of the most of the more esoteric explanations invoking antimatter and black holes. But most geoscientists think that part of an asteroid or perhaps a comet broke away and fell to Earth as a meteor. Now, if you want my humble opinion, there is no satisfactory explanation as to how a Tunguska meteoroid or its airburst effects had impacted the Earth. So once again, no one in the scientific community has a clue as to how the Tunguska event happened. And if you watch documentaries on YouTube about Tunguska, I think you will find the following. Documentaries propose innumerable theories. Take for example the Christoph Schuch 2008 Halbtotal Film Production, and I'll leave a link for this in the description below. The documentary, this documentary almost insults the viewer by suggesting innumerable theories on how the Tunguska event happens. Um, a, mix, a mosquito explosion, black holes, and there's just so many different speculations as to how this event happened. And I won't recount all of them, it just leads me to the conc conclusion that nobody knows officially how this happened, or they're not saying officially how it happened. So these are some of my thoughts. Didn't know how to tie them in, so... Okay, um, another thought I had and just a general consensus I have from watching other videos on Tunguska is that um, nothing grows here today. Only grass grows here. So for whatever reason, trees are prevented from even growing on this soil for whatever reason. Okay, eyewitness accounts. So when I went to the Wikipedia article on the Tunguska event, it provided two first-hand eyewitness accounts of the Tunguska event. The accounts were collected as a result of the Kulik, the Leonid Kulik expeditions, and the most popular, and, and of course the report is in Russian language, right? And thankfully, because of Google, Google Chrome, um, in other internet browsers we can translate that into English and that's what I did. Okay so as a comment at the present time I have not fully read the Kulik expedition report. It's very long. I'd like to get to that later myself. However I have put together a list of Tunguska phenomenon which should give an overall view of the event in the eyewitness accounts. So on the 30th of June 1908 at around 717 there appeared in the sky a column of bluish light nearly as bright as the Sun moving across the sky. Early in the morning a blue column of light is moving across the sky that's brighter than the Sun. Ten minutes later a flash and a sound, a sound which is similar to artillery fire, happens and the source of the sound moved from the east to the north and the sounds were accompanied by a shock wave and according to other accounts the shock wave is capable of knocking people over, the shock wave is capable of flattening huts and trees are also snapped in half. Trees are fallen over, but the trees are snapped mid-trunk. And it doesn't say that this was an earthquake, 
but it does say that there's other tremors, so the ground is shaking. Maybe a very mild earthquake. Uh, who knows how to describe it. Okay, and then also in my video here, I'm just going to include the most relied upon eyewitness account, which is the Semenov report. So Semenov is one of the farmers in this area who was close by, who was, who was uh, affected by it. And it's in the Kulik report, and it's the most cited. Okay, so Semenov said that the sky split in two and fire appeared high and wide over the forest. The sky split, or the split in the sky grew larger, and the entire northern side was covered with fire. When the sky opened, hot wind raced between the houses, like from cannons, which left traces in the ground like pathways. <coughs> During this heat, um, Semenov was so hot that he said he wanted to tear his shirt off. So there's an incredible heat and he experienced it on his skin. The sky closed shut and a strong thump sounded and then when that happened Semenov said he was thrown a few meters. I speculate that that's maybe part of the sound wave, I don't know. And it was as if rocks were falling or cannons were firing and the earth shook and afterwards there was a lot of crop damage and broken windows. Okay, now I made a note to myself to read in another phenomenon which happened of, of recent and that was in 2013 in Chelyabinsk, Russia and there was a comet that appeared and it landed and it hit the ground and it actually had some similar features to this Tunguska event where windows were broken, people were knocked over, a uh, bright bluish column of light was seen in the sky. It's a very similar phenomenon so I'm going to pause this video and uh, sneak another video in here. Okay, so just very quickly this is the Chelyabinsk meteor which happened and I'm just going to give a very quick definition and then show a video screenshot and likely I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to learn more. So this is the Chelyabinsk meteor. The Chelyabinsk meteor was a superbolide caused by approximately 20 meter near-Earth asteroid that entered Earth's atmosphere over Russia on the 15th of February 2013 at about 920 with a very fast speed it quickly became a brilliant superbolide meteor over the southern Ural Mountains. The light from the meteor was brighter than the sun, visible up to 100 kilometers away. It was observed over a wide area of the region and in neighboring republics. Some eyewitnesses also felt intense heat from the fireball. I cut it off a little bit, but I'll read it. Uh, initial reports. Local residents witnessed extremely bright burning objects in the sky in Chelyabinsk, Kurgan, Sverdlovsk, Tumen and Orenburg Oblasts, the Republic of Bashkortostan, and in neighboring regions in Kazakhstan. And amateur videos showed a fireball streaking across the sky and a loud boom several minutes afterwards. Okay, so I had to retell all of this information to bring you up to speed 
with what I'd like to say next. This is actually the whole purpose of, of my video is what I'm going to say now. So now what did I write here? I'm just going to read my script. So part of the challenge in making this video is that I first had to recount the Tunguska event otherwise what I will say next would not have been as meaningful. Okay, okay so I, I'll pretense my statements by saying the following is only my opinion and my speculation. The Tunguska event stands to be studied more, including by myself. I need to study this more. But I wanted to make a video sooner than later. At this moment in time, I really want to make a video. If you go to Martin Liedke's channel, and he uh, Martin had some helpful information by somebody called Captain Kirk, and I st it's I still need to go look at some more of his videos. I haven't recently. But anyway, Martin's talking about comets, or cometographia, cometographia, and some information they came across. I still need to look at it better. But I think we're on the same subject. And it's a fantastic video. And my only struggle is that it's so much, it's so much information that I can't currently process all of it. There's so much to be studied and looked at. So I'm thankful to Martin for his video and please see a link in the description below if you haven't seen that yet. Okay, so back what I really wanted to say is so the Tunguska event, what was it? I mentioned at the beginning of my video here that I have a problem with the official story. And even the official story is uncertain as to whether an asteroid or meteoroid or meteor from outer space was the cause of the Tunguska event. So if you ask me, what do I think caused the Tunguska event of 1908? I'll say as well, I'm not really certain. <coughs> but I'll tell you this, I don't believe that an asteroid from outer space is the cause. And why do I feel this way? Well, even though I don't discuss it in my videos, I am a believer that the Earth is flat and I think that there is a firmament above us, or a dome. That's what's above our heads. And um, I won't try to make an argument for this. It would take too long in this video, but I assume that most of my audience is familiar with the flat Earth. <coughs> so why is the flat Earth and firmament important? Well, it's important because most official scientific accounts suggest the Tunguska event was caused by a meteorite from outer space. But if you are like me and have come to reject that space travel is even impossible in the way that NASA presents it to us, how are we supposed to conceive of the Tunguska event? Right? So I didn't think I don't think this asteroid came from outer space, but how did it happen? Right? That's the one I'm struggling with. But again, if you look at the Chelyabinsk meteor that happened in 2013, you can see that the trajectory does not come from outer space, but moves rather horizontally across the sky. And if you look at a similar video, if you go to Los Angeles, you know, look at a video called SpaceX Falcon 9, you also see a comet which follows a similar horizontal trajectory, right? Okay, so Going and uh, I'm going off my script here. So going back to the Semenov account from the Kulik expedition to the Tunguska site, many details are also presented. Most strikingly in the Tunguska event is that there's sounds of artillery and shock waves and ground tremors and smashed windows. Okay, if you've watched my <coughs> previous. New Madrid earthquake video, or my Caracas earthquake video, or Napoleon's Comet video, there's actually a strangely repeatable pattern with uh, some of the details found in the Tunguska event and these earthquakes, and that's artillery fire, sounds of it, shock waves, loud blasts of light, right, earth tremors. Very regrettably, I actually lost some old earthquake videos I had on my previous channel, but uh, take my word for it, if you go looking into the historical earthquake which happened at Port Royal Jamaica or the Boston earthquake, there are also accounts of similar type of blasts, um, like artillery fire, which happen in and around the time of the earthquake. Okay, The New Madrid earthquake of 1812 had very similar details. There were distinct blasts which sounded like artillery. There were foul smells, similar to sulfurous vapor 
and tremors, and like the Tunguska event, the New Madrid earthquake event also had trees snapping mid-trunk. Right? So, that concludes the script and the things I wanted to talk about.